Hello, my dear students. Welcome to my channel called Sai Study Circle. Today, I would like to introduce a chapter called Higher Purchase System, which is there for first year BCom, that is first semester BCom, for various universities like Bangalore University and many other universities. Now, let us come to the topic called Higher Purchase System. What is higher purchase system? So before going to the higher purchase system, I want to tell you what are the different types of purchases we have. Different purchase systems we have. We have a cash purchases, we have a credit purchases. Means if, if you have enough cash, you can buy any goods for cash, paying cash and buying the asset or any goods. But when it comes to credit purchases, there are various types of credit purchases we have. One is buying the goods on credit for the payment of a deferred period or a future period. Say I buy the goods and I'll take uh, credit for one month. <coughs> Means if I buy on first of this month, I have to pay the money on first of next month. This is what we call as a credit system. Where if I buy the goods, I will become the owner of the goods, I will become the possessor of the goods. If I want, I can keep it. If I want, I can sell it also. This is what called as a credit system of purchases. But there is a, a special system of purchases called as higher purchase system. What exactly this higher purchase system means? Very simple. If I don't have enough cash to buy an asset, say for example, I want to buy a two-wheeler. Say it's cost me around 50,000 rupees. If it's cost me 50,000 rupees, and if I don't have enough cash to pay 50,000 rupees, then I can ask the seller to sell on higher purchase basis. How, what is this higher purchase basis? That is what? It is a special system of purchase and sale. When the goods are purchased on a higher purchase system, the purchaser pay, pay the price in installment. That means you are paying not the entire price at a time, you are paying at an installment. Means you are paying at an easy installment, monthly installment, quarterly installment, off yearly installment, or else you will be, be paying an annual installment. <coughs> but you have one condition here the seller always will not give you the entire purchase price as a credit price for you. You may seek some amount of payment at the time of purchases or at the time of sale. Say, for example, if 50,000 is the price of an asset and the seller or the, the vendor, he may ask us to pay a minimum amount, a minimum amount, usually 10% to 30%. 10 to 30%. If he may ask you to make a, a payment, initial payment. So, after paying or initial payment, you need to pay remaining 40,000 rupees to the vendor. For this 40,000 rupees, you can seek installments or deferred payments. Means, you can pay 10,000 rupees as in each year and you can pay in 4 years or you can pay 5,000 rupees taking 8 installments like 8 off yearly or you can take just 4 months, okay, paying 10,000 10, 10, rupees each for 4 months so that your purchase price will get over. Here, 40,000 rupees, whatever the amount, the purchaser is due to the seller, he will not let you give 40,000 rupees as an installment price because he has to wait for 4 installments or some period, it's a future period. So many years he has to wait for getting his money. Thereby, the vendor or the seller, he will charge interest on the outstanding balance or the amount due by buyer to the seller. So that means on this outstanding amount of balance, he will charge interest. Now, let us come to the point, higher purchase system. It is an agreement between two parties. One is a higher vendor, other one is a higher purchaser. Where well, higher vendors say is uh, what are the features of higher purchase system? Quickly we will go through it. Okay. So the features means characteristic features. One is goods are delivered 
buy the seller immediately. If you buy it at the time of I purchase agreement. If you want to buy, pay 10,000 rupees down payment, immediately take the asset for your possession. You can start using it. The only thing is, the agreement, the purchase, the ownership will not be transferred. Only you can take the asset, but the ownership will be transferred only at the payment of lost stock. Means, you will not become the owner at the time of purchase. You will become owner only at the last stage, that is, paying the last installment, you will become the owner. Next is, buyer agrees to pay higher purchase price. What is this higher purchase price? Cash price, that means, how much you are paying, outright price. Suppose, if you are not going for installment purchase, if you are going for a cash price, 50,000 rupees is asset value, paying 50,000 rupees, you are buying it. That's called as a cash price or an outright price. But here, higher purchase price means cash price plus the total interest availed for the period which you are available. So that is what we call it as a higher purchase price. Higher purchase price is a cash price plus interest. That's called as higher purchase price. In case of default, suppose if the buyer doesn't pay installment, then the seller will have every right to take back, repossess the asset. So that means you can take it back the asset because the ownership will be still with the, in the hands of the higher vendor. So therefore, these are the characteristic features in a higher purchase system. There are certain concepts to understand in higher purchase system. First one is higher purchaser. Who is a higher purchaser? A person who buys the goods under higher purchase system. Who is called as a higher purchaser? Then, who is a higher vendor? A person who sells goods under higher purchase system is called as a higher vendor. What is cash price? Already I explained to you, it's an outright price. If you have enough cash to buy the asset or the goods for a outright price, for a whole price, that is called as a cash price. What is down payment? Down payment is nothing but initial payment. When you are going for higher purchase system, you have to pay initially some amount to the higher vendor. That amount is called as a down payment. Higher purchase price. See, higher purchase price is always consisting of cash price, cash price plus interest. All of you understood? Let us understand what are the methods of calculation of interest. See, when you go for a higher vendor, each vendor have got it, their own system of calculation of interest. Here we have, there are four methods of calculation of interest for our syllabus. First is calculation of cash price. This is the first method what we ever have to understand for today's program or today's video. See, calculation of cash price. See, whenever there is a question called as calculate the cash price, we need to have an understanding in the given problem, definitely he will not be given a cash price. So, outright price, definitely he will not be given. Then we need to find out the cash price. How to calculate cash price? with the given information. Just I'll read out a question quick. Mr. X purchase goods under higher purchase system. He makes a down payment of rupees 2000 at the time of purchase and he paid 2800 as a first installment, 2600 as a second installment, 2400 as a third installment and 2200 as a fourth installment paying 10% rate of interest every year installment or every year. Now, with this information, we need to calculate cash price. How to calculate? Very simple. There is a formula, there is a format, we have to learn it. This is a definite question for 6 marker in the final examination. Let us see how to calculate. See, first, let us say calculation of cash price. See, we have many columns. First column is year column. Next is closing balance, next is our installments, then we get the total, with this total we have to deduct or minus interest, then we get opening balance of cash price, opening balance of cash price. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 columns we need to make. So, when you are writing year, year column, we should not 
in the last video we have discussed the introduction to hierarchy system and some of the basic concepts of hierarchy system and we have understood the characteristic features now let us come with the, the methods of various methods of calculation of interest see if i am the vendor i send the goods on installment basis or hierarchy system with the interest then i need to know how to calculate the interest see we have four methods of uh, calculation of interest the first method is calculation of cash price calculation of cash price see in the given problem if e is not given the cash price definitely we need to calculate cash price now i will tell you how to calculate the cash price see i have written a, a question on the board just i read out for your sake mr x purchased goods under higher purchase system down payment he paid 2000 rupees first installment he paid 2800 second installment he paid 2600 third installment he paid 2400 and the last fourth installment 2000 for which he is paying 10% per annum as a interest and we need to calculate cash price see if the question is given like this we need to calculate cash price with the help of this format or pro forma what is this pro forma says very simple here column closing balance installment the total what is the total closing balance plus installment see closing balance plus installment the addition of these two is a total from this total if you direct interest you get opening balance of cash price you know what is the meaning of cash price cash price is nothing but what cash price is nothing but the price which we are purchasing on the uh, we are purchasing on the asalu we call it as a principal amount say principal price okay now let us solve this question see now here if you look at here i have taken here should be 1 2 3 4 5, but i have taken 4 3 2 1 right always whenever you are calculating cash price you should take 4 3 2 1 only if it is a 3 3 installment 3 to 1 if it is a 5 installment 5 to 1 like that only we have see what is the closing balance after paying the fourth installment of 2200 do you think you need to pay anything no because if i made a payment of 2200 rupees of fourth installment i need not to pay anything any amount to the vendor this is the last amount i have to pay if i pay <coughs> 2200 then i will become the owner of the asset so this installment i told you initially what is the meaning of installment installment will be consisting of principal as well as interest principal means the cash price of the asset and also interest so here the rate of interest is how much 10% this 2200 is a installment amount the total of 0 plus 2200 is we get 2200 only this total 2200 is including 100 rupees of 100 rupees of cash price that is a principal amount and 10 rupees of 10% of interest that means 2200 is equals to 110 now what is to be taken out interest is to be taken out that means if i want to take out the interest i will take it as interest i have to calculate 10% but this 2200 which is equals to 110 now if 2200 into 10 divided by 110 this will comes to 200 so my interest amount is 200 now you will get opening balance of cash price very easily 2200 minus 200 you get 2000 rupees is the cash price or opening balance of amount cash price that is principal price you are due on the fourth installment see how do you get this opening balance of the fourth installment it is from the closing balance of the third installment am i right see the closing balance of third installment become the opening balance of the fourth installment now what is the installment in the third year is 2400 now 2400 plus 2000 how much it becomes 4400 now 4400 into 10 divided by 
I will get 400 rupees of interest. Now, what will be the opening balance of cash price in the second, uh, third year is 4000 rupees. The opening balance of cash price in the third year came from the second year closing balance of 4000. And third year installed 2600. This becomes 6600, 4000 plus 2600 becomes 6600. Into 10 divided by 110, I will get 600 rupees. Now, the cash price in the second year will be 6000 rupees. The closing balance, opening balance of the third, second year came from the closing balance of the first year. And the installment price of the first year is 2800 this becomes 8800 6200 plus 2800 is 8800 into 10 divided by 110 you get 800 rupees now you got 8000 rupees so that means the cash price at the beginning of the first year is 8000 now it is very easy to calculate therefore cash price is equals to what is the initial first year opening balance is 8000 and what is the down payment you need you paid 2000 so your cash price is 10000 rupees you understood see the cash price is 10000 rupees this is how we need to calculate cash price when there is no cash price is given the question See, if you need to calculate cash price, definitely you will be given interest rate and installment, how much you pay in each installment and inst down payment also will be given to you. Okay? So, this is a question. If you want, I will revise it. The pro forma is year closing balance plus installment is equal to total minus interest is equal to opening balance. See, in my example, I have taken 10%. Suppose in some other problem, if it is given 5%, then we take 5 by 105. If it is 20%, then I will take 20 by 120%. If it is 15%, then 15 by 115%. Like this, I will calculate the interest. Are we getting it? Okay, fine. So, thank you so much. Please, if you have any feedback, if you want to give any kind of feedback, please subscribe my channel Sai Study Circle and I'll get back to you with an, another example in the next video. Thank you. Hello students, good evening. Today I would like to teach you the higher purchase system. In, the, in my last video I showed you how to calculate interest and I told you there are four methods of calculation of interest and in the last video we have learned the first method of calculation of interest. Today we will learn second method of calculation of interest. First, we have to identify how this is a second method. How to identify in the question, it is a second method of calculation of interest. Very simple. If there is a question here, if you read the question, if you read the question, you will understand whether it is a first method, second or third or a fourth method. Very easily you will. See, first method is the question was asked, calculate cash price. See, that was a question. So, we did in the last video. But here, the question is not asked as a cash price. The question is, calculate interest for the each year from the following details. Means, he is asking specifically, calculate interest. So, how to calculate interest for such question? I told you what is cash price in the last video. Cash price is nothing but full value of uh, the asset which you are paying in cash at the time of purchase that is outright price here is given a cash price and down payment is given 4000 and balance in three installments of rupees 2000 plus interest and rate of interest 5% per annum just very simple guys see if cash price is 10000 and you are making a down payment of 4000 rupees and you are paying in three installment as 2000 rupees each as 6000 rupees and it becomes 10,000. See the cash price is also 10,000 and after three installments or using three installment also you are paying 10,000 only. 
there is no benefit for the vendor or the seller. Definitely, the seller will give you some time in paying the installments or cash price or whatever the value of the asset, then he should get some benefit. Here, there is no benefit going to the vendor. Definitely, he might have charged interest or he will calculate interest. So, in this case, the installment, whatever is given, the amount is given, interest is not included. So, we need to add interest to this 2000 rupees each installment so that we will get the installment price. Now, let us see how to calculate interest for the three installments or three periods. Now, first, whenever you are calculating interest, we should calculate, we should take first cash price. So, cash price is 10,000 rupees. Am I right? From this, we need to deduct down payment. Say, if you deduct down payment of 4,000, you'll get 6,000. That means, your vendor is giving you a loan of rupees 6,000 as an installment in the first year. And generally, he will calculate interest on the outstanding balance of 6,000 rupees. He is given the rate of interest is 5% per annum. Since the balance loan is given is 6,000, we calculate interest say on 6,000 rupees. Now, let us calculate interest for this 6,000. So, for 6,000, 5% is 300 rupees. Now, this value becomes 6,300. Now, we need to make installment number 1. Say installment number one, you have to pay 2000 rupees towards the cash price, towards the cash price or principal value plus 300 rupees of interest. That is 2000 plus 300. So you need to make a payment of as first installment 2300 rupees. Now, what is the balance for the second year is 4000 rupees. So there ends by the first year. So first year you paid an installment of 2300 and interest is 300 rupees. Now second year how much is given as a loan, how much outstanding balance you need to pay to the vendor is 4000. On that you calculate interest at 5%. It comes to 200 rupees. Then the balance becomes 4200. From this we need to deduct installment number two you have to pay 2000 rupees towards the cash price or principal amount and the second year interest of 200 rupees so totally you will make a payment of 2200 there ends the second year and the outstanding balance for the third year will be 2000 then you have to pay 2000 rupees to the vendor he will collect on this or he will charge on this 2000 outstanding balance again interest for the third year so interest at 5% on 2000 is 100 it becomes 2100 now you will make last installment that is third installment third installment 2000 plus 100 2100 thereby you becomes zero that means the interest for each year is interest for the first year 300, second year is 200, third year is 100. So for 6000 rupees of loan, you have to pay 600 rupees of total interest. So this is how to calculate. This is how to calculate interest under the second method. All of you got it guys? Right. See, now we will understand the third method of calculation of interest. See, third method of calculation of interest is little tricky, little difficult, but it is very easy to understand and also identify it is a third method only. Because in the third method, see, I have a question for you. This is a question asked in the year 2016 for Bangalore University first semester become students. A very simple question, but little tricky. I'll tell you how to identify it is a third method. See, wherever you find in the question, if you read, I will read on behalf of you. It is uh, clearly visible in the, on the board. 
calculate the amount of interest and principal included in each installment. That means we have to calculate how much interest is included, how much principal amount is included in an installment. So now for this, what is the information he furnished to us? It is very simple. Cash price is given 2 lakhs, down payment is given 50,000 and balance in 3 installments of rupees 60,000 each payable at the end of the each year. See in this question, nowhere is given rate of interest. If the rate of interest is not given in the question, we should understand it is a third method. It is a third method of calculation of interest. See how to calculate. See first we have to check with. See what is the amount of down payment is taken. Down payment is 50,000 rupees. How many installments he was given? Three installments. Say three installments he is given. Three installments. What is the each installment amount? 60,000. So installments is three installments on each installment is has to pay 60,000. Six threes are 18. One lakh 80,000 rupees. So at the end of the third year, you will be paid totally 2 lakh 30,000 rupees of value for the asset you purchased. But when you pay cash, you have to pay only 2 lakhs. That means we will deduct cash price out of it. If you deduct cash price out of it, so how much extra you are paying? 30,000 you are paying. That means for these three installments or for three deferred payments, you are paid total interest of how much? 30,000 rupees you are paying. But we don't know how much interest you are paying in the first installment, how much you are paying in the second installment, how much you are paying in the third installment. Now that we need to calculate. So in order to calculate the interest payable in each installment, we need to get some ratio. How to calculate that ratio? Only for this third method, we should take cash price. I'm sorry. Higher purchase price. Higher purchase price. See, this is called as a higher purchase price. 2 lakh 30. Okay. So 2 lakh 30 is the higher purchase price you are paid. From this, deduct down payment. See, down payment, how much you paid? 50,000. This price, 2 lakh 30. Down payment, 50,000. 1 lakh 80. I repeat again, when you are taking higher purchase price, look at the year, higher purchase price is down payment plus 3 installment of 60,000 each, 1 lakh 80, this 2 lakh 30 will be the higher purchase price. What is higher purchase price exactly? What is the total value of amount you are paying under higher purchase system? See, you pay 50,000 down payment and 3 installment 60, 60, 60, 3 installment 1 lakh 80, see 2 lakh 30. But you need to pay cash price. When you buy the asset by paying a cash 2 lakhs, see, you need to pay only 2 lakhs only. But how much you pay? 2 lakh 30. So that is why we call it as a higher purchase price. Always we should take higher purchase price. Under third method, always we should take higher purchase price. From that, we like down payment 50,000. 1 lakh 80 will be the first year due. The first year, how much you are due to vendor? Seller is 1 lakh 80,000. Now, if I deduct first installment, what is the first installment for us is 60,000 rupees. See, I'll deduct 60,000 from this. Then, 1 lakh 20 will be the second year due. So, that means I have to pay 1 lakh 20,000 rupees to the vendor in at the end of the second year. Am I right? Now, if I deduct second installment from this after paying second installment end of the second year if i pay 60000 then what is the amount balance available is 30000 my vendor has given 60000 rupees of loan or i need to pay to the vendor 60000 at the end of the or beginning of the third year so this is the values which i have to pay first year 180 
second year 120 third year is 60000 now we need to draw the ratios how to get the ratios is very simple first year second year third year see what is the due first year is 180 second year 120 third year 60000 now eliminate four four zeros four zeros all numbers are divisible by six six ones are six twos are six threes are the ratio has come out with three is two two is two one now the total interest what is the total amount of interest thirty thousand which has to be divided in the ratio of three is two two is two one so we get to know the what is the amount of interest in first year second year third year now first year interest first year interest is total amount of interest is 30 and 3 by 6 how we got 3 by 6 is 3 plus 2 is 5 5 plus 1 is 6 that is of 3 by 6 3 by 6 is nothing but 1 by 2 means half of 30,000 is 15,000 rupees then what is the second year interest second year interest is total interest is 30,000 and 2 by 6 2 by 6 2 by 6 is 6 1s are 6 5s are 5 2s are 10 10,000 rupees third year third year interest is 30,000 into 1 by 6 6 1s are 6 5s are 5 1s are 5,000 rupees now we got the interest paid in the first year second year and third year what is the question is asked he asked the question calculate the interest and also principal see we have answered for the first question but for the principal amount we need to follow one small format what is that is calculation of principal amount see principal amount is to be calculated first year second year third year see installment in each installment you paid is 60,000, 60,000, 60,000. In this installment amount, interest is included. So if you take out the interest, if you minus the interest, you will get the principal amount. So I am minusing print interest amount, 15,000, 10,000 and 5,000. Now we will get the principal amount, 60,000 minus 15,000 is 45,000 60 minus 10,000 is 50,000 60 minus 5 is 55,000 so we have given answer for the second question also so it is so simple I will give you some of the tips in calculating interest and the third method see identifying the third method is the first question for us identifying the third method when there is no rate of interest given in the problem, definitely it will be a third method. This is the first tip. Second one is, when rate of interest is not included, we need to follow three steps. First, we need to calculate total interest. How to calculate total interest is, identify how much down payment he has made, how many installments and each installment how much you pay, take it totally. That is called as a total higher purchase price means how much you pay to the vendor including down payment and all installment put together how much you pay then cash price definitely cash price will be lower than or lesser than the higher purchase price so 30,000 is the total interest you pay for 3 years now next is calculation of ratios see why we need to calculate ratios there is no other method or other way to identify or to know how much interest you paid in the each installment so what we take, see under this method, we take higher purchase price as a base. So higher purchase as a base. So on this higher purchase price, first we deduct down payment. That is first day when you take the delivery of the asset, you have to pay minimum 50,000 rupees. Then how much you have to pay to the vendor is 180. So that means the first beginning of the year, how much you are due to the vendor is 180. At the end of the first year, you will pay 60,000 installment. 1,20,000, this will be the beginning of the second year, you are due. 
so that we have to mark it as a second year then you will make a second installment also at the end of the second year 60,000 at the beginning of the third year you have to pay 60,000 now 180, 120, 60 this is the amounts which you are Outstanding balance you have to pay at the beginning of first year, second year, third year. We got a 3 is to 2 is to 1 as a ratio. Apply this 3 is to 2 is to 1 ratio with the total interest which we are calculating. So first year we got 15, 10 and 5. First question we have calculated interest. Second is what? Calculation of principal amount. Principal is very simple. Total installment we know 60, 60 we are paid in each installment. In this principal amount is also there, interest is also there. If you take out the interest amount, easily you will get the principal amount. So, this is how we can easily solve the third method and it is asked in the year 2016. So, all possibilities asking in the year 2018 also. So, my dear students, if you like my video, way of teaching, please subscribe my channel, Sai Study Circle and press, press the bell icon and please share all your friends so that they can also understand in a better and an easier way. Thank you so much. We will meet you in the next video for a 14 marks question and very soon I will teach you. Okay. Thank you.